with what type of information. But there may be some extraordinary cases that some may be interested in information than what he is permitted to access. Okay. So in that case, he can be given with some rider that, okay, uh, you, you can do this, but take this password to access the other thing. That is always possible. So what are the kind of things that generally is available in HR dashboard? They say total salary, total bonus, total overtime. These are mainly for the hires, okay? The executives who need to monitor this, average performance, total sick days, average sick days, average overtime, average bonus, average salary, like that. This is one kind of thing. Next. Here again, it is absence rate with a chart. This is number of hires, number of recruits. <laughs> Over time, this time axis is there. Then agency fees, supposing you employ some consultants or some agency, outside agency. What is the fee over time? Total HR cost, the average number of employees this month, number of, here it, you can divide into two, average number of employees regular and average number of employees, uh, say on casual basis, all that, contract. Then you have this, more or less same thing, but much more detail, <coughs> like contribution, compensation distribution, accounting, customer, human resource, marketing, etc. Then staff strength by department, then sick, injury, holiday, then uh, vacation, how it is affecting the workforce. So like that. Next. Here again another dashboard which is mainly for, uh, uh, you know, this active employees, then retired and terminated overall, then headcounts here in absenteeism, finance, market, uh, this is uh, administration, finance, marketing, department wise, then male and uh, female ratio, then full time employee ratio, manager uh, uh, to employee ratio, here promotion, turnover, absenteeism, so like that this can be there. then. And finally, uh, employee status, that is uh, overtime cost, employee count, hiring process uh, satisfaction rate, vacation days available, gender diversity ratio, average time to new hire, average number of applicants received per uh, vacancy, and uh, bonus expense. This can be another type. Next is uh, here only mainly for hiring dashboard that new hires, open positions, applicants, candidate added, etc. etc. Here and then uh, here this average days to hire, average days to fill 98% uh, of our, what is the acceptance rate, what is the withdrawal rate. Okay, so these are also and then uh, different grades like engineer, front end engineer, marketing manager, etc. So you have to decide which particular type of you know information have to be given to the guest. And all information should be available, including the business parameters final like ROI, then the equity ratio, then debt equity ratio, okay, EVM, economic value added, all those things also should be there so that in, if any applicant, potential applicant is interested to know that status of the company in terms of business, uh, you know, outcomes. Because that will determine whether he will be willing to join or not. Like a Balasar uh, alloy, which was sick for last uh, three, four years before it closed down finally. Anybody who is who has some, you know, intuition and uh, to scan the data properly, he could find out that something is wrong with this company. So that data access must be there and it is the HR dashboard democratization. Okay. okay. And you cannot hold any data from anybody uh, unless of course it is very, very secure uh, in your own way. Okay. Security also has to be defined properly that which data is secure and which data is not secure, which data can be accessed by which level and if anybody is interested. For instance, applicants, the whole set of data uh, on business outcome has to be given because he wants to see. And if you want to attract potential talents here, 
applicant uh, through applicant uh, tracking devices and other devices you have to funnel out this information okay. so you know go back so the, what is the hr digital <coughs> transformation it is this is the word automated and data driven now hr dashboard keeps all data but to come at to come to that data because these are essentially the summary now what kind of analytics they will be using to get at the mm -hmm. final results mm -hmm. say for instance economic value added it's not easy to find out economic value added so what kind of data you need to find out economic or return on investment or profit so some basic calculations has to be there and you have to get all the data from hard data from accounts and other places get as you said everybody has a fixed you know uh, uh, yes yeah, fixed uh, uh, number of uh, you know delivery to be given and from that delivery you uh, accumulate and then ultimately you find out whether you are reaching the goal or not final goal say monthly target or a yearly target and how what and whether the target is according to your yearly plan right. what are the deficiencies which are the areas where it is deficient why it failed to achieve that particular target level so these are all details which you need to know to take a course correction okay so all this data should be made available <coughs> so now here again uh, i i stepped out uh, i uh, gave some steps that what are the some features of new age digital digital age first is going paperless as because nowadays you know fast is on paperless because there is a green regulation nowadays environment regulation and people are becoming more and more conscious about environment so using more paper means using or uh, giving the nature a destructive impact because ultimately paper comes from bamboo and other things okay so vegetation at large is under threat so how can you go paperless that has to be first of all found out to the extent possible that you you can auto automate or you can use digital devices to uh, you know uh, facilitate this paperless <coughs> transformation next is automation in motion next is use of employee self service tools apps and devices mm. now how, how from here you will be able to assess your company that how far one by one i will keep on discussing uh, how far you are away from this transform digital transform then gamify e recruitment how much you what is the cost of your hire now how much have you assess now if you go for e recruitment two things happen one is you are able to reach more to talents even remote areas and second is that you are able to save on cost of yes then what are the devices to facilitate e recruitment will be most successful like gamification for recruitment training and boarding on boarding extensive use of virtual reality and auto, uh, augmented reality devices for recruitment on boarding training and mm -hmm. then e learning mm -hmm. that means mm -hmm. using digital mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. borderless training means uh, everybody can access whatever he needs the training apart from his own you know need based on his interest also he can supposing you are providing this kind of course now one may be may not be remotely associated with this for instance a, a work. casual worker but he feels that yes i i should learn this thing because he has a zeal for that you must give access to that that is why it is called borderless training now because you do not know what is in store for you ultimately you may find that that uh, that particular uh, employee becomes an asset to okay. at some point of then uh, hr analytics because ultimately to get at the summary which are given in the dashboard what are the kinds of analytics and what are kind of data to be collected and what kind of data analytics 
like statistical, artificial intelligence, intelligence machine learning, etc. have to be employed. Then for all these, facilitating all these, you have to have a digital culture, fostering a digital culture. And finally, employees will less okay. So next. Vast tax of forms for benefit claims, leave application, and other miscellaneous items require a considerable effort in tracking and organization, let alone time taken to process. So paper that requires inter interdepartmental approach approval would see one sheet of paper travel across building floors to get necessary signatures. Bear in mind that HR departments in large companies handle hundreds if not thousands of paperwork every day. Not to mention some companies hire data entry clerk just to key in information from paper documents to Excel suite. The next. So impl implement environment friendly system that encourage less paper uses. That's number one, because saves cost and space. Embrace digital signatures, if you at all signatures are needed. And do away with printers and faxes, because it's expensive. So how can we change these printers and faxes? Next. Educate employees on the benefits of going green. This is because they have to be, because people are generally you know, feel secure if I have a piece of data where signature is there and all this, okay, instruction, etc. But that concept has to be, you know, uh, you know, has, has to go away. He, he should equally uh, feel secure with uh, sort of, uh, you know, some uh, online instruction or more based uh, information based on some devices, like you know, email kind of communication or uh, say chatbots kind of communication or other means, okay, whatever. Then putting up systems for paperless HR that to fully, fully implement these paperless office measures. Proper support infrastructure should be in place and uh, use of proper software such as employees hiring, onboarding software addresses most of the steps by automating tedious workflows and virtually all costs related to hiring paperwork. So here, there is some software set there, proper software set there. Uh, uh, let me see whether I have uh, taken the, those softwares name next. So next is HR automation in motion, and particularly in these areas, recruiting, onboarding, compliance, clarification, confidence, connection to culture, data analysis and risk management, employee onboarding, means those who want to quit, then they employ training and employ benefit management. Next. So what are the steps for automation? Here, here we have to give some thought. Now, how we can go about this automation process? A standardized onboarding and training process for new hires. Do we have that standardized process? Ah, we have a lesson plan. Okay. <coughs> Are you using software for any? Yes, software. Automate timesheets and approval process. Streamline payroll. Use programmatic job ads to target the best candidates. Here AI powered uh, job writers are there. Okay. Uh, then enrich candidate data, potential candidates. Automate contracts. Give instant access to write apps. Track vacation days and speed up leave request. Collect performance data for decision making. And automate submitting and approving expenses. Expenses is another key area where automation is needed because it is also intricate part. Next. Use one inbox for all employees request. Automate performance appraisal at set intervals. Trigger notifications about eligibility for benefits, streamline onboarding processes, and integrate all HR tools and processes into this HR. So create a standardized onboarding and training process for new hires. Here, you can use bots, onboarding bots, Slack, chatbots, etc. So. <coughs> It will facilitate much easier one, and you, you can use also some you know uh, kind of softwares. Next, 
If your business requires employees to submit time sheets, this is a key area to automate fast. There are countless time tracking tools out to there to help you and quickly approve data. Some good examples are when I work toggle, although time tracking functionality is also built into some accounting system like Xero and project management, management tools such as Timo. So time tracking can be uh, you know, facilitated and uh, it can be simplified using this kind of software, but you can go on searching in the, you know, because it has to be essentially customized also to your environment. Next. Streamlined payroll. Payroll can be another highly time consuming task for HR. With HR automation, scope of, is more extensive than ever. For instance, Gusto, the popular US-based payroll software, automates payrolls, taxes, and filings. It also offers integration with time tracking apps, business operations tool, and expense management to help you stream. You don't need to uh, copy this because I am giving this to everyone. And uh, here, take HR tech stack essentially is a tech stack typically consists of programming languages, framework, database, front end tools, back end tools, applications with API that is a platform for all integration of all these softwares. Okay. So this can be targeted. Next, use programmatic job ads to target the best candidates. And this is the biggest tech advances in HR area in recent years. It is the use of technology instead of people for buying, placing and optimizing job ads. And uh, it is uh, use big data, targeted job ads, real-time bidding, campaign optimization. Here, tool like Jovio is a great way to automate more of your recruitment efforts and attract more ideal candidates with less time, effort and budget. There are many other parallel softwares here. Next. Another way is uh, <coughs> Workable's people search function, which automatically brings together multiple data sources for every candidate you are looking for to give you the most comprehensive view of their skills, social footprint, and contact details, and rank candidates by relevance. Here even you can go into the Facebook, okay, Instagram, and other uh, Twitter, other places to see his active role and that can be funded as uh, screen to make uh, you know uh, necessary data building for the particular candidate you are looking for. <coughs> you know, to go back. Then apps like Discover ORG also enable recruiters to automatically enrich their database and applicant tracking systems with data such as titles, roles and technical responsibilities. This is a great way to identify and nurture the best candidates through your hiring pipeline. Next. Contract signing is another thing which HR does. And here, again, apps like HelloSign, DocuSign, you can request your signature you need and sign documents online and automate follow-ups until everything is correct. These caps are quite quicker and easier. Okay, next. Give instant access to right apps. Whatever apps you need, like a time-consuming part of onboarding new stuff is making sure they have access to all the right apps. So it gets even more problematic when user credentials for business tool changes. You can solve this with a password management app like LastPass. It makes it simple to give each new hire access to exactly the right apps. Next. Tracking and approving leave. So, track vacation days and speed up leave request. Have to be a headache for your HR team. People in HR, absence.io are two helpful apps for managing and approving vacation days in less time. Collect performance data for decision making. You can automatically collect data using performance management apps such as 15.5 or service for employee and management feedback using tools like Google Forms and Type Forms. With processes for regular feedback in place, you have the best information at your fingertips 
to create opportunities for internal growth, personal development, and management of students. And this can help in inform promotions, recognize individuals for awards, and let you know where to place your training budget. Next. Automate submitting and approving expenses. <coughs> Don't let expense requests clutter up your inbox. Smoothest process is you want to have a clear and well-documented workflow and to ensure expenses are submitted in exact format uh, your HR needs. You can use these softwares like Spendesk, Conquer. Next. Use one inbox for all employees requests, a great solution for funneling employee requests for all channels, including SAC, Slack and email, into one inbox is best. Now, not only you can search HR request in one place and auto-respond to common questions, but you can also view reporting to understand where your HR team is spending the most time. Some typical employee requests, training, travel request, internal tech support, payroll questions, complaint and feedback, contract question. So Slack is a messaging app for business that connects people to, to the information they need. And here again, the other devices come, chatbots, etc. Then automate performance appraisal at set interval. Here, uh, continuous performance management software like here. Next. If your organized trigger notifications about eligibility for benefits, here you can go give in mobile also. Mm -hmm. Now it is or email or whatever the way you connect with your employees. And uh, an example could be increasing an employee's vacation leave after they have been with the company for a year or offering stock options to top performing staff. You can uh, automate similar notifications to your HR team and the management when it is time for performance reviews or a salary raise for individual team members. So trigger notification. Next. <coughs> streamline onboarding process. Who want to quit? Here also you can streamline here. One-to-one -one correspondence or whatever way you want. And to clear this all views, whatever, that can be standardized. Next. Integrate HR tools and processes, all these have to be integrated properly and here again the tech stack is needed. So next. Now here some of the typical tech stack which I have mentioned. This is kind of programming like languages, softwares and other things. Uh, all integrated in a platform. Next. Now, Next is, after this tool, that is automation in motion and going paperless, we have this third step, use of employee self-service tools. Can you really automate these things, submit leave requests and absences yourself, time tracking with many options, create and track travels and receipts yourself, maintain master data independently in the self-service portal, Track performance reviews and target agreements at any time and submit HR request on other topics and questions. So what are the devices you use next? Here are some of the devices. Kiosk, mobile, iPads, okay, chat, desktop, this is or uh, video, SMS, all these things. So next video records, employee, next, smartphone, mobile, HR kiosks or chatbots are there. These are virtual assistants to facilitate communication with employees through a variety of channels like WhatsApp, Slack, Microsoft Teams, etc. Next, this is the kiosk, single kiosk, and uh, for large number of employees, next, Multiple kiosks. You might have seen this in airports and yeah. other places. <laughs> then employee benefits from HR kiosk. You get time clock and payroll information, vacation and paid time off request, benefit enrollment and changes from form submission authorization, printing and scanning, HR appointment scheduling, events and company news, list of hazardous ingredients of a product in MSDS employee orientation and training and service suggestions and complaints. 
and for company benefits, this is the employee benefits, company benefits with uh, providing for HR kiosks. Provide 24 by 4 by 7 employee access, reduce HR staffing demands, promote company announcement, reduce printing and mailing expenses, encourage eco-friendly alternatives to paperwork, enforce documentation accuracy, audit and track user activity, and increase employee enga engagement and satisfaction. Next. This is HR chat boards to answer to employees queries. Because many cases in work related you know, <coughs> operation, he needs some guidance. So all the way he has to go to the supervisor or HR head and all that. Instead of doing that, he can get access to HR chat boards like this or kiosk or whatever devices he installed and he can get the answer given to the query. And that has to be it's a part of knowledge management, integral. You have to update also from time to time based on the recorded you know, queries which you have. Many cases you may find all kinds of you know, intriguing queries where you do not have the answer, ready answer. So again, it has to be reviewed time and again. This is also a mobile <coughs> chatbot. Next. Here again chatbots. It can be installed in uh, mobile itself or this kind of a you know, uh, interface. Next. <coughs> chatbots can improve the em employee experience by answering to their questions. These bots employ a fast personalized reply to their queries regarding employee benefits, scheduling, insurance, vacations, sick time, etc. And these chatbots are also gainfully used in recruitment hiring activities, supporting existing employees, and automating other routine HR activities. Here, for instance, recruitment bots are their special in screening, interacting, and job expectations. Next. Here, e recruitment here. Your automatic recruitment through, say, Skype or that kind of thing with CV and multiple number of candidates, virtual hiring program, this is. Next, it is much more. Here a big board is there and you are getting all the pictures of the, and you can connect by just <coughs> fingering here to get his details. So e recruitment or hiring here, next. So all this digital information and one of Deloitte's Global Human Capital Trend 2019 survey found that only 6% of respondents believed that they had the best in class recruitment processes in technology while 81% while believed their organization <coughs> processes were standard or below standards and mind you, <laughs> this is based on the US and other West advanced countries experience. I don't know what, what will happen here. Next, for this reason, there are tremendous opportunities for professionals to adapt their process and reap benefits of using this advanced technology. So, uh, next, e recruitment for talent acquisition is the automated process of identifying, pulling in, screening, and recruiting candidates utilizing online stages and HR software. Here. Uh, next. What are the uh, common type online recruitment? Screening, sourcing candidate first through LinkedIn, Facebook, WhatsApp, using an applicant tracking software, interviewing candidates online via video conferencing software, using online testing via surveys and questionnaire, creating job boards to advise, advertise job offering, and intelligent use of virtual reality, augmented reality gamification in this entire recruitment process. So next. So this is one of the applicant tracking software. This is all the whole process will be standardized and there, there are good number of softwares available here. Sourcing, screening, taking their uh, biodata, then uh, further uh, progressing with uh, C question and response and all these things and overall the assessment will be done. And enable job seekers. And here again, if it is there in your HR dashboard, which can be accessed by the potential candidates every all the time, 
it need not be based on advertisement. Why depend on advertisement? Many, many uh, good candidates are there who are just based on your company's performance and track records want to join him. But he is already employed in some places. So he may not be interested to join there. But he is a talent to be located and sourced. So why not give him opportunity and then uh, let him give his uh, inputs and automatically you source him and then finally go ahead uh, for through uh, other processes to either select him or deselect him, whatever. So next is uh, AI powered job post writers are there, artificial intelligence power and content generators are also there. And these are the tools like tap recruit, gender decoder for jobs. So, and many, so, so many. You can use like you know next you go. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of uh, advertisement done by AI powered writing. Mm -hmm. Or like this. Join us, we are hiring. If you have skills described, we will write us to this email. What we are looking for? Fluent in these 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 things. Animation of uh, elements is this is the animation. So we offer you job in uh, one of the hottest locations, startups, etc. And uh, take hubs, whatever you need. This is just kind of a you know, example, but you can manipulate it. You can uh, customize it based on your requirement. And similarly, nowadays companies, what they are doing is recruitment marketing because they are not only uh, they are trying to attract good candidates by uh, giving him the company information that what are uh, our return on investment, how long we are there in the business, what is our research uh, uh, inputs, that means the capital that is employed, what are our contribution in the market, how we are placed vis-a-vis -vis our competitors, all these detailed information so that you can attract the talent again. So this is a kind of AI powered job post writers, here so many candidates are there, here uh, hubs put and we are excited to be named as the best workplace in technology by great place to work thanks to employee feedback, like that you can advertise for you and then what you are looking for, like this. This, this will be done automatically by AI powered job writers. Now we come to gamification. Gamification is being used now profusely in universities also, particularly in technical education. These are games. So games, learning games. Like, you know, mobile and uh, other devices, you play games, okay? Running or whatever, you are shooting the candidates, etc. Similar kinds of game, but it has to be oriented to your particular job. And that you have to devise. There are many softwares for doing that. Customize, to customize your these games. Mm -hmm. Nowadays also, sir, some of the consultants are doing all those things. Yes, yes, many consultants uh, are there. Uh, to judge the appraisal yeah, of the yeah. game. Yeah. So that can be done in a mobile or in a, in a common interface uh, where he can access, the applicant can access HR dashboard or whatever. Next. This is a game kind of thing in mobile itself. You can send it and then he does the job and uh, sends you the feedback. Next. What gamification achieves? Learning, user engagement, motivation, achievement, reward. And what is the challenge? Because many things are achieved at the same time. Because otherwise it's a drag. So if you give some, for instance, you ask him, this is our company, we do this. You virtually, virtually design how a company will be there to produce this with whatever inputs you need and whatever instruments you need on whatever uh, production machinery you need, you design yourself and then give us this. So that is that that's how he gets involved in this process. Next. Like say this is uh, MM's uh, I spiced Twizzle app. No, no, keep it there. Is a good example of a simple game with a big impact. Users are tasked with finding a Prizo hidden within an image pool of this. Prizo is a you know a sort of a hard uh, cookie, round shape. So he has to find from this. 
how many pieces are there okay so it keeps you engaged and then you get if you get the correct answer he has an eye for details and many things will there next google google one of the most innovative companies of our time and early adapters of gamification for over a decade now google has been conducting google code jam competitions and open to all to attract fresh uh, talent new talent winners win prize up to $50,000 but that's not the important thing what's the key thing is that google is using gamifications to attract potential hires who are in line with company's skill requirements the companies who have used c factor that is collective intelligence a proof of the power and abilities of gamification if done right using gamification for recruitment can elevate your candidate experience to a whole new level and help you attract the right candidates next c factor i have said that this is a measure of collective intelligence by this paper it is there next uvel <coughs> umbel it is called big data startup create a umbel mania to have amateur and professional coders go head to head with opponents in a first person fighter style game coders are not fighting per se instead they are coding their movements to earn points and you can give points accumulate and finally source that in a potential good candidates next next forma post french postal service has been using gamification to address one of its most pressing challenge retention in the first few weeks of joining using one out of four new recruit has cost the company extensively their gamification platform this one works candidate through a routine day as a postal carrier from waking up early learning about the job itself to familiarizing themselves with job ethics candidates get a real feel of the job before they even join outcome forma post saw drop out rates from 25 to 8 plus next in ki government communication here here can you crack say they give you know from many they have to crack many intelligence sources that means to identify terrorist or these like that course which are suspect yeah suspect so can you crack it and everybody is open to you know join so those who can crack it then they are selected and not only selected first they are screened and then finally they can go through much higher level of test next next marriott marriott recruitment what it does is virtual hotel with what are the gadgets you need what are the how he will uh, uh, organize your, uh, your reception desk then uh, what will be the in the in the kitchen what will be the kinds of inventory how much inventory you should possess how the kitchen will look like you can design and send and based on that the best uh, you know best person who is uh, giving this such design can be awarded and again sourced as a candidate to be sure next this is a, it allows candidates to run their own virtual hotel in which they design their own restaurants purchase inventory train employees serve guests it virtually simulates the whole experience to the hotel mm-hmm. next this is us army man again here airman challenges are given and then they select next airman challenge game to teach prospective recruits more about mm-hmm. air force next Uncle Gray is a Danish agency used online gaming to recruit front-end developers. They also use this, like sponsorship deal with players with Team Fortress 2, etc. And it is on the URL will be given, and whoever is interested, they can join next. So that way, you can really uh, make it attractive. This gamif- using gamification, you can attract not only the talents. but you can the whole process of recruitment can be made up okay. but you have to find out which particular games mm-hmm. you should be using next 
So this this way you have to and apply mechanics, points, values, then mission, manage, monitor, measure the way they are using the mechanics, it's game mechanics. Okay, next. And this is all details of game mechanics, how how really you are uh, ad, ad, advertisements also can be given. Next. So you can even have online, offline quizzes, trivia, hackathons. Hackathons is again the computer based uh, job uh, mela, you say, job hiring mela. So where many participants are there and you can you are organizing a some kind of code breaking uh, you know question or other kind of designing, virtual designing, etc. And you can give points. And better work is a another point referral system. Many softwares are also basically. Next. So some of the most popular gamification platforms are this. Each one with its own characteristics. Next. LinkedIn, Flipkart, you know, recruitathon. Recruitathon means recruitment. Hackathon used in rec recruitment. Many are uh, part participants. And uh, they, in India, they first recruiting uh, hackathon, a fun way of getting team together on a challenging project, namely chasing critically hard to fill open positions in record time, and they scored 226 candidates in less than five hours. Next. So same thing, this. Next. Now use of virtual reality. What you can do is, virtual reality heads at some now, to give a feel of the company, it can be recorded in the headsets and you can take a take him to a tour of the entire company. All the office rooms like this, even bump in with, a, with the CEO, have some recorded version of the CEO, which appears like interaction. Then go to the, in a manufacturing plant, go to the manufacturing area and show one by one what machinery, what is being, how uh, people are operating, how people are interacting. So the tour, detailed tour of the entire company with its uh, employees through virtual headset so that he, and he gets a feel of the culture as well as your instruments, whatever being used or machinery is being used uh, in the office as well as in production place. So he, he will be more attracted to get a real good feel, uh, first hand feel of your company. Next. This is, this is an exciting process and it is an immersive interactive experience that works through a headset to simulate another reality that is virtual through using VR headset. Next. Recruiters can combine virtual reality recruitment methods with skill assessment for a truly immersive on the job evaluation of candidates' talents also. Like talent trial, yeah, this is there, uh, one software. Next, you can take next. Next, you can take him office tools here. Next, applicant assessment can be done here. Like Jaguar, you see, next, go back. Jaguar used this game, recruitment game, as a gateway to its application. Players were guided through an, you know, Land Rover Jaguar, the automobile company, Tata, which is located in UK, uh, through an experience that allowed them to learn about electric vehicles and solve demanding code-breaking puzzles in order to test their curiosity, persistence, lateral thinking, and problem-solving skills. Next. Commonwealth Bank has started to use virtual reality to test candidates' decision making in real life scenario. And they give, give all different kinds of scenarios which are confronting the business. And they ask for decisions for how should we get over this. And based on that, their decision making ability also is seen. Next. Next comes augmented reality. What is the difference between virtual reality? Virtual reality is totally virtual. But now, augmented reality means some digital objects is placed in real world. For instance, you are sitting here. Now you want to see one big uh, shark from jumping from the sea. So you can bring it here. And everybody will be 
you know, just like the Spielberg in his, uh, you know, the picture where uh, he... Uh, animation. Animation. Animation or whatever. That, <coughs> in fact, uh, IKEA is a big furniture uh, company, Swedish um, company, which is using this uh, app that, supposing you have a drawing room. Now, it has a... St a store of many digital, digitally given all the photographs of all the different types of sofa, uh, center table, etc. Now you want to see in your real uh, bedroom or a real drawing room how which sofa should be placed where and how it will look like, whether it will be too uh, crammed, it looks like, or it's uh, uh, good, well spaced. Uh, in the uh, drawing room etc so you can you can take the picture of your drawing room and one by one from the digital store you place that sofa in your bedroom and see which place it has to be given and that way you can do this similarly rolex has uh, also developed so lens card is also doing this yeah lens card rolex also which uh, which watch suits you or even uh, some dressmaking uh, designers, they give a app where uh, just take a skirt and uh, or sari yes, yes. and put it and uh, see how it looks like. So instead of going to the trial room, taking all the uh, you know trouble of changing the outfit and again coming out. So they, like that, these are being used. So these are top top ten augmented reality glasses. It looks like next, like a specs, okay? And here, of course, all these devices are there in the in frame. frame, okay? <coughs> it is also with a headset comes next. Even in mobile, you can have. And believe it or not, I have got a information that 2023. I record. I saw one advertisement. By 2023, all the uh, smartphone glasses will be converted to this smart glass. Because they have to, in any case, stay relevant to changing scenario. So even a mobile will be help you to give this augmented reality devices. So all smart, uh, smartphones may have smart glass by now this is a, some some of the exhibits. This is the real life, so real world. Now we want to uh, impose, superimpose uh, uh, this one, bird or uh, butterfly. Okay. So these are the virtual. Okay. okay. Next, like this. This is a road, but this comes. Next, here again, a someone from say alien object comes out in this. It comes here. This is hologram. You have seen Netaji Shuvas hologram is given in the India Gate. Yes. So it's by ray. This is light diffraction techniques. So you can build and see what kind of thing. Next. Then mixed reality. What is the difference be between mixed reality is next stage high? For instance, nowadays, instead of getting direct skeleton, a, a, the medical students can get a skeleton uh, uh, from the digital world and dissect it. So mixed reality, difference between augmented reality and mixed reality is you can maneuver, you can manipulate, you can uh, zoom up or, uh, or zoom down. Like that these virtual objects can be manipulated. Whereas in augmented reality it is only placed, that's all. You cannot manipulate. So, so that's how it is a next step advance. So like this, you, you must have seen in Star Wars like this yes, yes. in hand. Okay, these pictures. Or this kind, this is a ball you see. Next. Even you can, in a, I have seen in a Ferrari factory in Italy, here this kind of device is there. And you get a feel that you are running at the, you know, 200 uh, mile, what mile speed, okay? <coughs> then this is a skeleton where you can dissect or like this, point out and see. 
immensely helpful in you know this training. Next, here again he is taking a skeleton and see inside. <coughs> that week in UK, they have a app where there are more than 2,000 vehicles throughout its two terminals. Passenger can use the air map from their mobile phone to navigate through the airport to reach to a destination where the plane will be landing or departing. 360 degree walk through. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Through which gate? Mm -hmm. All gates will there, be huh? Then uh, IKEA place app, I have already said that this different furniture signal place. Similarly, Rolex no, and Sephora virtual estate. Next. No, so next so next is seven is e-training. E-training is using these devices. Not only online, but these devices like uh, gamification, like uh, VR, AR, MR technology, no, 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 no. using online platform, all these kinds of e-training you can give and giving access to your users, whoever is interested. Next. And it can be nowadays, you know, like we, we in Zoom, for instance, where mobile uh, 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 teaching was uh, all these uh, even today, some schools are not open. So through mobile, so they can act, uh, ask questions to the teacher also, and they get the so Zoom and other Microsoft, uh, Google uh, things are there, and. Whatever learning is there, the, this is a learning uh, evaluation model and you must be having some learning like level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, engagement, relevance, customer satisfaction, level 2 is knowledge, skill, attitude, confidence, commitment, level 3 is monitor, reinforce, on the job, learning, encourage, reward and level 4 ultimately what are the indicators that this learning has been successful. Borderless is nothing but allowing everybody who is interested. Next, HR analytics means how to get at the dashboard. Okay, so what raw data you have to collect and how to process that to put it in the dashboard. So these are the different talent, customer marketing, finance, logistics, whatever needed. Next, so here he will pay performance, engagement, higher, etc. You go back. Then it is combined, cleaned, and made to a same format, and finally data mining, and then use of the technology which are being uh, uh, used for analyzing this data, and put it in the form of graphics or uh, other condensed you know, summary. Next. Deloitte's 2021 Global Human Capital Trends survey found that only 3% of their 6,300 plus executive respondents had the information to make sound people decision. Now this is also, HR analytics is also, also called people analytics or worker analytics. <coughs> so measure, manage, then linkage with business objectives then return on investment and performance improvement. This is the four stages. So analytics categories are descriptive. Supposing you want to predict that what will be your churning rate, churning out rate, how many are leaving. So based on the past trend, if you use proper analysis, you can, you can predict. Similarly, what will be your hiring rate next two decades? So like that, it can be descriptive, it can be predictive, and it can be optimized. It means, as you have said just now, that how to optimize your workforce to get the best out. So some of your most important people questions are here. Uh, organized health assessment and strategy development, recruiting and sourcing, onboarding and integration, development and performance management, and finally, separation those who want. Next. So here are some metrics again. Absenteeism, turnover, which I showed you in HR dashboard. Cost per hire, time to hire, early turnover, time since last promotion, revenue per employee, performance and potential. Okay. So
So delay will awards per employee, engagement rating, etc. Next. So KPI have to be found out, and the you know key performance indicators for each one has to be there. <coughs> like career development, training, reward system, stress management program, search capacity. Okay, what is the agility of your workforce to scale up to a large scale emergency situation? How often are we successfully hiring and retaining all these things? Next. What is the rate of improvement measured when responsive action is taken to complaints made by stakeholders? How effective is our staff development program? What are the cost of workforce employees? All these are KPI, important KPI. Next. <coughs> So you can forecast the demand and supply of people, identify suitable employment, assessing training needs, implementing pay for performance, maintaining effective employee information, <coughs> deciding rewards, and managing employee. All these can be done. So these are the HR analytics process. You have different kinds of data. You merge the data in common format. Apply big data and statistical analysis, like cluster analysis, decision driver analysis. Risk analysis, <coughs> then next is digital culture. To make all this transformation, you have to, you know, make your people get attuned to digital culture. Next, how technology and the internet are shaping? Because uh, again, there should not be disconnect between people and all your transformation you are gradually leading. So, how to take care of that culture? So that they are taken along with you. Uh, no, no, go by that. So this is digital culture that has to be you know, uh, taken into account, which uh, decides the relationship between humans and technology. Next. And important is breaks hierarchy, speed of work, then encourages innovation and attracts new age talent and retains current work. Now last but not the least is wellness program being organized by the employers like this in the workplace. Next, laughing program. Next, nutritious food. Guinness is there. Okay, so <laughs> next. So here this is a multi billion dollar business. Now already. World over. This well, wellness yes. program, multi-billion dollar business. So most of the employ uh, employers are taking this help of this. So, and, and, and they have definitely got uh, 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 reaped uh, huge benefits out of them. And that's why this. So uh, some of the Wellness programs are like on-site fitness center, community service centers, smoking session programs, transit options, paramedical services, telemedicines, yoga classes, lunch and healthy snacks, employee assistance program, maps, etc. Next. So these are the key to ensure digital transformation. First of all, you define your goal, which has to be aligned with the business objective. Next, you, before you implement any new technology, take a look. Take a look at your current situation. That means where are you placed now, so that you know what is your path ahead. Gather a transformation team. This is very important and crucial, and it should be cutting across different hierarchy and also functional area. Develop a strategy and build the right tech. And that means whether you need a, what combination of technology you need. Which programming language, which softwares, which platform, what kind of digital devices like AR, MR, etc., or gamification. What, what you need, this you have to determine. Next. David Ulrich model, HR model, who is the pioneer here. He says four areas. One is next. Strategic partner, change agent, administrative expert, and employee champion. So it's like a champion, uh, more or less akin to that black, uh, that uh, this martial art one, which you had in Six Sigma. Program. Like champion, okay, those lead 
leaders. So change agent has to be there because change agent is very, very important. Change and transition of business. Next is uh, administrative expert also is needed. Then who will champion? Because in you are administrative expert who is looking after from the point of view of employers. But employees champion have there. They, this employee advocate knows what employee needs and what HRM should know. So this is a sort of interaction and this is a connection between the HRM administration and employees. Next. And then this is the KMPG, International Limited, a British Dutch multinational professional service network, one of the big four accounting organizations. SHRN is Society for Human Resource Management, Alexandria, Virginia. Gartner again a 4.1 billion company uh, with uh, business in 100 countries. Select have, you have seen some survey results I have given. An employee-owned startup, main office is Congress Avenue, uh, Austin, uh, and uh, Dave Ulrich, professor of business at the Ross School of Business, University of Michigan, and co-founder of Adyoke. So, Thank that you. is all. Thank you. So, what I want to know is, have you got a picture at least? I know it is a very hazy picture. Once you go through now, you will be able to maybe uh, not